exciting day. I'm excited because Paul Kiker's here. And Paul Kiker's always busy, but he's been super, super busy because <gasps> something just happened to you. What happened to you? You were nominated. You were inducted oh, yeah, yeah. into. I was. I was. Uh, I, I was like business. Was it that? So I was inducted that, into the Gilmer County Sports Hall of Fame. And I think it's too cool. That was really cool. I was. And you surprised. hold the record in what? Held the record. So held the record. I held the record in pole vault, and mm -hmm. I, uh, it was broken. Uh, and then my youngest son Will took the record back. <laughs> but, uh, so Kiker, that Kiker, was Kiker. Great. <laughs> That was great. I love it. And, um, I love it. But you know, when when they when Patrick McVeigh called and told me, and and I was so grateful to Chris Berry for nominating me. I mean, and that was quite an honor. How many years ago was this? How many years? 19, We're gonna find out his age now. 93. So what's that? Wow, 10, 30. 20, 30 years ago. 30 years ago. 30, 30 years, years ago. ago. He I was got, just a child. I had a lot more hair back then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not as many wrinkles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I bounced yeah, a lot better yeah, when yeah, I fell. Yeah. And for people who just moved to our area and may not know, not only are you in the Hall of Fame for that, you also were a world champion water skiing person for how many years? How many I was, years? so um, gosh, that's a long time ago. Now, I always tell everybody it's kind of like underwater basket weaving, you know, mm -hmm. there's not that many people that does it, but it, mm -hmm. there were a lot of people around the uh, country, but the, did you ski after Liz Allen had had the championship for women? Maybe twenty years after that. Yeah, it was after Liz Allen, and there were a lot of legends that came through. But uh, you know, I, I actually skied growing up. Mm -hmm. my, my father got me into skiing, and uh, when I got into high school, I actually quit because the national championships were at the same time as uh, football camp. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in small town, I wanted to play football. I love football, love basketball, mm -hmm. love track. And, uh, you know, you get influenced by being around your friends. Yep. But, and it didn't help that right before I got into high school, I was actually the number one ranked skier in, in that the division I was in at the time. Went to Nationals, and I'll never forget it because they said, uh, up next is Paul Kicker. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> Paul, Paul Kicker from Elijah, Georgia. <laughs> I love it. And that was I love in, it. That was in West Palm it. Beach. Yeah, and, people and, used to walk in my office and say, I think we're lost. Can you help me get to Dallanaga? And I'd say, I sure can. <laughs> <laughs> I sure can. So, That's um, funny. So I, I went, you know, my dad's like, hey, you, know, you, you, should, you should win the Nationals. You've got this. And I actually went out, uh, fell and placed dead last. Oh, no. I placed dead last. Oh, no. So I had quit skiing and uh, play football, basketball, track, and then I had an accident in track, you know, and got hurt, and, and uh, that kind of changed some of my plans, so I, I started skiing again. Mm -hmm. And uh, You get hurt and you can't walk, so you ski. Well, that makes sense. Hurt, start walking. Uh, of course and, that makes sense, yeah. And within the next four years, I actually won the National Collegiate Slalom Championship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I won the Men's One National uh, slalom championship, mm -hmm. but the, the most important, you know, exciting thing to me was uh, I won the World Collegiate uh, Championship That's in slalom. Awesome. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget that, uh, so Hamp Alexander, Coach Hamp Alexander, and he's passed away now, was a high school coach. Mm -hmm. And he came up to me and he said, Kiker, he says, I've looked at your film. And he says, he says, you got some potential. He says, but when you make mistakes, you don't recover quickly. He said, when I get done with you, you'll have ice water running through your veins. Oh, wow. And How cool. And he taught me how to compete. He taught me how to compete under pressure, and he taught me how to compete, and, you know, it, it was fun. And, I, and often being good at what you do is not enough. No. It takes a little bit more than no. just being great at what you do, and you were great at what you do. Um, I was telling somebody, I was in a meeting this morning that we have once a month, and it's about different people in our community who may be business leaders, may be business owners, may be uh, marketing specialists, just different people. And I was telling them who my guest was going to be today, and I was describing you. And I said, well, he's country boy done good, because you are a country boy. I am a country boy. You are a country boy. And, and the other day, y'all got to hear the first round of Mountain Life, which has been mastered, and it will be on Dwight's new CD. And I kept listening to it, and so it has given me a vision for, you know, a lot of y'all are new to the mountain life, and I can tell that because I meet you in a grocery store, and y'all <laughs> sound like you ain't from around here. Y'all sound like you're from New Jersey, or you sound like you're from New York City, and I'm going, 
How did you, how'd you get here? I can pick out California. But the too. one, oh yeah, but the mm -hmm. one thing I find out, you love our mountain life. Absolutely. They love they the life that we have been blessed with. Well, I grew up in Orlando in Atlanta. I'm anything but a country girl, but I got here 52 years ago as fast as I could. I adjusted well because I married the world's biggest redneck hillbilly, and he was amazing, and he was stubborn. He was opinionated. He was wickedly quiet, and y'all can't imagine me being married to somebody quiet. But for many years, we did everything together. And today in our meeting, we were talking about how did you end up doing what you do for a living? And I said, well, I am mistakenly in television because I was doing three other jobs that I didn't like. And this offer came available to be here. And I love every minute of it. And I said, that's the cool thing. 18 years of being in front of a camera, I still love every minute of it. And you love what you do today. Oh, absolutely. You love what you do today. If you've chosen something stupid to do and you don't like it, well, quit doing it and find something you want to do. Right. And I want to share a Bible verse because yesterday I was involved in something that, that kind of took me back and, and kind of made me, I was like, oh, oh. And then I thought, oh. And then I said, okay, I'm going to be okay. And last night my friend Lisa Perry from up in Turtletown, Tennessee, who um, her husband passed away suddenly mm. Christmas Eve. I'm cooking Christmas Eve dinner and I get a call that David is in a helicopter and he's only 39 years old and he doesn't make it. Oh, no. This was 10 years ago, it's been 10 years. Wow. But I look at what she's done with her life since then. She should have sat down and just cried and belly ached and whined and moaned, but she didn't. She started doing a Bible study and she started helping others and she started being all that she could possibly be. That's what we do. When life mm -hmm. deals us something crapola, then we turn around and we say, okay, you've dealt me this crapola, mm -hmm. but I'm going to turn it into something good. And so this is the Bible verse that Lisa gave me last night. And it was just when I needed it. And I had just said, okay, I'm going to pray about this and then it's going to be okay. John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief, Satan, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come, Jesus, that you may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And that is what is about. That's what our life is about. We, I have a hard time telling Satan to stay away because I'm like, I'm a fixer. I can't fix anything. Well, I can't. I absolutely cannot. Some things you can't fix. Some things, if, you know, and, and, and I have a new saying that somebody came in my office and they handed me a little list and had three of them, two of them I can't use because it's not politically, y'all would go, oh. <laughs> the other one says, my give them mm, is busted. And I love that one. <laughs> I really like that one. I may have it done on a shirt. But, but when we look at everything we have faced, mm -hmm. you faced the economic downturn when you had clients lose everything through no fault of yours, no thought, fault of theirs. They lost it, whether being in the stock market or I know some 80-year-old people who lost everything they had because they invested in stocks when everything tanked many, many years ago. So many people, but you have a choice. You can bounce back and you can come back. Oh, absolutely. Stronger than ever. Absolutely. Or you can just sit down and bellyache and whine and moan and complain. And when I got that from Lisa last night and realized it's the 10th anniversary of, of David going to be with Jesus, she was a young widow with two kids and she came out of that yeah. and that's what we do and so as and I told this group I'm in today I said if you got up this morning and you got your kid to school and you prepared breakfast and you told your husband all the errands he's to run today and you did all the things you've done you've just done 30 minutes of live TV because that is life this live TV is our life mm -hmm. It's what's really going on in the community, what's really mm -hmm. happened to us, what may happen to us in the future, and what possibly could change all of our lives. We are facing World War III. We don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. Yeah. You better make it good today, today, and have very, very special prayer requests today because if y'all don't know about Wilburn DeFore and the bad, horrible wreck he had, they have now sent this man home for his family to take care of him. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know Gail and you know she has health issues, the kids have worn themselves down to the wire. They are worn out from taking care of him for three weeks at the hospital. He has now been sent home for his family to take care of him at home. 
Well, a little bit of home health goes a long way, but it doesn't go far enough. So I want you to pray for the DeFore family. They are up against it. He's a 75-year-old guy trying to get home from work one day. Somebody hits him flying at a huge rate of speed, and he's been in the hospital three weeks now. Now he comes home. He can't walk. He has to be cared for. He has a catheter. He has all the things that you have to take care of, and he's at home. What do you do? What do you do? So if you think your life was bad yesterday, but if your husband made it home from work and he didn't have a horrific accident, if you didn't get a call that one of your children uh, was hurt on a ball field mm -hmm. or passed out or whatever, life is good. And live TV is a lot like life. When we walk in here to sit down, we may have gotten bad news about a family member. Mm -hmm. We may have gotten exceptionally good news, like our newest member of the Hall of Fame. <laughs> We may have just watched the news where this morning on Fox I watched something that made me cry, it made me sad, it was talking about four different horrific things that were done to people before they were then murdered. And I'm sitting there, watched it three times and made myself sick. Because this world, I don't know if y'all know it, we're in a mel of a hess. And that's all I can say on mel live TV. Hess. We're in a mel of a hess. So, Today, accept this beautiful sunshine, accept the cold temperatures, accept the beautiful leaves. We're going to go to some photos now and a little bit of video of what's going on in the community from Halloween to the kids that make you smile. There is a reason to smile today, even though mm -hmm. the world is in a mail of a hiss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to stop and think about it. We we have a choice. We can pick up the phone and call Gail and say, hey, is there anything I can do for you to help you? Can I come and sit with him for a little bit? Can I take you to the doctor? Can I do this? Can I bring food? We have the ability to help others. That's what we do. That's what you've always done. As long as I've known you, you have always seeked a way to help other people. I try. And that's, that's very, very important. I was also telling some people today about your beautiful Holly. Oh, yeah. And when Holly showed up in Atlanta on a stage looking like a $10 million Barbie doll and was in this world competition, she's also a teacher, a mom of three, and Mr. Demanding's wife. <laughs> so, I pull my weight now. Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. But, but it was so funny because I'm like, not only is she an amazing teacher, She's an amazing companion. She's she an is. amazing mom. She and is. then she gets in this tournament. And is she still doing any of that? No, she, she hasn't. You know, it was she had a, a certain window. She had a lot of thyroid problems mm -hmm. and wanted to do that competition, gave her reason to, to eat cleaner. And then, mm -hmm. of course, you know, our kids were exploded in activities. Mm -hmm. And that's been the focus of our life is, is you know, our faith, our family, and then making a difference in our community through mm -hmm. our work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she's she's not in that habit. She's been having a lot of back problems. Oh, wow. Had to have an epidural. Oh, and wow. Matter of fact, I just talked to her on the way here. She'd gone to see a spine specialist. So, oh, my gosh. Um, so not working out as much as she used to, but yep. she's still a tough little lady. She is. She is something else. <laughs> and if your kids have been lucky enough to get to know Miss Kiker, then your kids were lucky. So <laughs> we're going to show you some Halloween photos. A lot of these came from down in Ball Ground and um, to the Garden Club. I cannot say enough thank yous to the Ball Ground Garden Club for putting on the spectacular. And this is our studio back to normal. It's so nice to see. Trace was out for a couple of days. He was sicker than a dog. <laughs> we'll just say he was sicker than a dog. He had a temperature or high temperature, and he was just feeling really poorly. But a whole bunch of folks around him were feeling poorly too. So it's good to have the crew back. And um, it, it's so crazy because as winter sets in, so do the germs and so do the cooties. So um, will I mask up? Absolutely not. Will I try to eat healthy and stay clean and drink a lot of water? Yeah, I'll do that. But I'm not going to mask up. I'm not going to panic. Now, this is over Lake Chatoog. Is that not gorgeous, that full moon? Is that not absolutely beautiful? And if you have not been up to Hiawassee, get in your car and go. Go enjoy the leaves before they're gone because I'd say in about four more days, the leaves are going to be looking pretty Pretty peaked, they'll be gone, and uh, get out and enjoy. This was um, 
photos on the way to Big Canoe. Now look at that. <clears throat> the color is just vibrant. It's beautiful. Get in your car. And if you have an old collectible car, for goodness sake, get out in it and go and tour these beautiful mountains. And this is a dog who came to visit a piece of property up in Morganton that we have for sale. And this was the sweetest, sweetest dog. This dog, Paul, like it, look at him. He is a chocolate lab and a German, what's it called, Weinerheimer? Weimer on it. Yeah. That a combination. He was adopted. Was he was 60 bucks adoption. Wow. Is he not beautiful? He and he is, and he loves to hike. They hike four or five miles a day and just absolutely love it. But uh, what a, an amazing place to live in the mountain life. We live in this beautiful mountain life. We are blessed every single day, all four seasons of the year. You can go to Fort Mountain hiking, you can go to Amicalola Falls and sit and stare at the falls, even on a cold winter day and see the ice coming off the falls. There's so much to do in the areas that we serve and that is my precious, precious Zanna Jordan. And I'm telling you, she loved Halloween. This was the first Halloween she'll remember probably. She may not remember this one, but we'll remember because she got lots of suckers, lots of candy and lots of chocolate. So um, to everybody who participated in this, is that not a beautiful, beautiful sunrise? Absolutely gorgeous. This is what fall brings to Georgia. And if you're lucky enough to live in the communities that we serve, you are lucky enough and uh, just amazing. Now we had trick or treat at our office yesterday and we got tickled because we thought after the 300 kids that we served on Saturday, we wouldn't see any more, but we did. And this is our next door neighbors at the Ball Ground Tavern. If you haven't checked them out, have good, good food and uh, nice folks. And uh, again, it is trick or treat time. And we love that. We love serving a community that reaches out to the children, the families. That's what it's about. And it's about your family life. It's about living in the mountains. And even though Ball Ground isn't in the mountains, we have some beautiful mountain view lots that are for sale now. And if you want to build yourself a beautiful home with a mountain view lot, we have some lots that are just absolutely gorgeous. We're very blessed. Very, we very, very, very blessed. Now, I have one little short clip I want to show y'all because do you like salmon patties? I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, salmon patties can be the simplest recipe you ever do or the craziest recipe you ever do. <laughs> I used to do a crazy recipe and then somebody toned me down a bit and liked it a little bit differently, so that's how I do them. But I did it for the Garden Club. One of the great things about joining the Garden Club is once a month they have a meeting and they always provide breakfast. So I think that's one reason a lot of folks go. <laughs> and this is a day that I made some food because Evelyn said, could you help me with the Garden Club breakfast? And I said, of course I will. So we're gonna share this recipe with a very, very simple, when it gets cold, you want something hot to eat, salmon patties are one of the quickest, easiest, and a little bit of health going on in them too. So here we go. Hey, morning everybody. It is breakfast day at the Garden Club and Ball Ground and oh, salmon patties and amazing casseroles are cooking. And the recipe for the casserole was so, so simple. And thank you to Evelyn for scoundering that up. And our salmon patties today, or the way my granny made them, a little bit of cornmeal, a little bit of flour, a little bit of ketchup, onions, and the salmon. And oh my goodness, I cannot wait to flip these suckers over and uh, deliver them to our friends. I hope you will stay tuned and keep up with our country cooking right here in Ball Ground, Georgia. There you go. Okay, salmon patties. You can do it two ways. You can do it with just open the can of double Q, take that bone out, Add an egg and a small, small amount of flour, stir it up, pan fry it, make sure your grease is hot, fry it. Or you can do it with a little bit of cornmeal, a little bit of flour, an egg, some very, very finely chopped onions, mm. and a little bit of ketchup, which adds a little flavor. So you have two different recipes, a little simple and a little sassy. And I like, I, sassy. I like the sassy, I like the sassy. So, <laughs> like so the anyway, sassy. there you go. Now, Paul hasn't gotten to hear this, but I want y'all to hear, and I think um, Tim did some footage of beautiful mountains this weekend. If you have not gotten out and seen the beautiful mountains, you have to. Yes. But I want you to hear, once again, Dwight Sanford wrote this song on the fly when somebody called and said, hey, can you write a song? I need a promo, da, da, da. He said, I oh, can't do that. And I looked at him and said, yeah, you can. Just write the stupid thing, and he did. <laughs> so here you go, Mountain Life.
city stuff Don't you think it's time to go Where black bears climb and waters flow Hummingbirds out on the deck Your feet propped up and what the heck you love how we Down to Carter's Lake All the memories to make So much here for all to see A land that is so dear to me Welcome home to all your dreams Hot rod boards and mountain streams Now you love how we for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Jay, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ballground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> 
mine. Grown up, grown, grown up, up in every way, in every way, care and take care of you. You're mine. Grown up, and I know you're there. I'm a grown up, and you know I care. Cause it's you and me, and me, and you. So when you are okay, or not okay, I'll take care of you. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Okay, now can we go to the leaves in Dawsonville? Can we show those a little bit? And can we talk a little bit about the color? Because Paul visited Maine, I visited North Georgia. I'd whole lot rather drive 20 minutes from here oh, yeah. and see the leaves than to go all the way to Maine. I'm glad you got to go to Maine though and you got to take a trip. But can we show these photos of the Dawsonville color? Because when we look at the color around here, there's been some vibrant, some beautiful, there's been some that hasn't been so pretty, but in all in all, I'll take North Georgia over driving to Maine any day. That is awesome. Look at those mountains. That's beautiful. Are it's we the not same blessed? terrain. I mean, it, yeah. we are very blessed. We I enjoy are blessed. going because I've always wanted to go see it. But uh -huh. the terrain's no different than here. Look at that. The, it's gorgeous. The leaves are just as beautiful here as they were there. Yeah. Now. Granted, you've got the ocean sitting right and on you the And you got lobster. Oh, I love lobster. <laughs> the oysters were actually unbelievably good. I like raw oysters. That the was best cool. I've ever had. Yeah, that, there's something about these mountains. This is the time of year we show out and we show off. And if you haven't been up here to the mountains and visited with us, we want you to come and see us now. Oh, yeah. My granny'd say, now, y'all come back. Now you're here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me what's going on with you because I know you've been super busy and I know that. Economically, things are changing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So just a little. <laughs> oh yeah, they're just a little. <laughs> you know, I guess probably the most frustrating thing that I'm seeing is is my, I am concerned that we have crossed the point of no return. Mm -hmm. Worries me. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, the Bible tells us it's clear that pride becomes comes before the fall. Mm -hmm. And I believe that as Americans, we've become so ridiculously prideful. Um, and, and that pride ble ble bleeds over into an arrogance that that we are bulletproof, that we can pretty much get away with anything. And unfortunately, we can all think of that person that was headed doing the wrong things a little bit at a time, mm -hmm. and then they reached the point of no return to where their life was tragically off altered, mm -hmm. either forced upon them or, you know, they... the the pain of doing the things they were doing was so severe that they, that it was easier, the pain of changing was easier than the pain of staying the same. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, I, and we've got this election coming up and I, I, I care about our country, I care about our citizenry, I care about people, right? Because my faith is in the Lord and, you know, we're put here on this earth to make a difference. We're supposed to be the salt and the light. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, the well, light in the darkness, and there is much darkness today. Yeah, the light in the darkness. Now, unfortunately, we are human. We are saved by God's grace, and we have our failures, and we have our weaknesses, and, you know, cut me off at a four-way stop, and there's nothing godly about the way I wave at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm better than what I used to be only because I made fun of myself yeah, for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, and we're human. Everybody has something that they struggle with. Mm -hmm. But you go back to the, you know, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have a choice when tragedy hits. Like, I really like listening to, I've listened to Jordan Peterson for quite some time, and he talks about, you know, the struggles that we face in life. And, you know, when you've been wounded, you choose to love. You have to embrace courage. So, mm -hmm. in America, we have a courage problem. We have a, a discipline problem, mm -hmm. and we have a 
sacrifice problem. Mm -hmm. The baby boomers have really refused to sacrifice, and unfortunately that lack of sacrifice is probably going to hit them pretty severe over the next 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. But their grandchildren and children are going to are not going to inherit a country that they inherited, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, one of the things I'm concerned about, one of the things we've seen here recently is interest rates are spiking, right? You've seen it. What's a what's a thirty year mortgage right now? Shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. <laughs> I think it reached eight and a quarter percent. Hush here now. Recently, yeah, right? it did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the question it did. is, you know, but but if you listen to the media, the Federal Reserve, you know, has been on this interest rate hiking campaign to try to stamp out inflation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they paused uh, and said back in July, August, I think it was, that hey, we're we're going to pause here. We're going to see how things pan out. The market was projecting, you know, very little chance of a rate cut, but yet mm -hmm. we've had the 20 year and the 30 year uh, interest rates move rather, rather dramatically. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I can't, I don't have the statistics specifically in front of me, but you know, I think the 20 year was like at 3.8% at the end of first of August and then it mm -hmm. hit over 5% mm -hmm. here recently. So why, why in the world are interest rates continuing to go up when the Federal Reserve says that they're gonna slow things down a little bit? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. You know what I think it is? I think the fiscal irresponsibility of our leaders has gotten to the point mm -hmm. that people are going, why in the world am I going to tie my money up for 20 or 30 years mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. a government that's spending recklessly and foolishly? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. to be fair, you've heard me say I'm a political atheist. Mm -hmm. I believe that Christ died on the cross for my sins, and he is the only hope for salvation. He's the only way to go through this life by keeping your eyes on a goal. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm an equal opportunity basher. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to Trump. All mm -hmm. right. So Trump comes in. He's been this flamboyant individual in his personal life. He spins like crazy. Half of the country thinks he's our savior, mm -hmm. you know, financially. And yes, the economy was doing really good. Things were great. Real estate takes off. But he was running over a trillion dollar deficits when we were at full employment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Foolish. Absolutely foolish. Then we have the COVID debacle. They, the government prints all of this ridiculous amount of money. Mm -hmm. They pay people more to stay Teaches at home. Teaches us to become not Re self-sufficient and lazy. Reliant upon the government. Lazy. Lazy. Right? Lazy. Now, you go back to the markets. You know, the, the government policies have refused to allow us to have a recession since 2008. Mm -hmm. And recessions are normal parts of the economic process. We we don't like it, but we have to have recessions. Do you really not think what we're doing now is a recession in itself? Well, I, th I think that, yeah, I do think that we're in... When you can't come out of the grocery store and have gas money left to fill your car up, well, is that not part of a recession? But the consumer is still spending a lot of money. I don't think we're to the recession yet. I don't think they're spending money. I think they're spending plastic. Well, well, the data does show that they're spending I think plastic. they're spending plastic. They yeah. are. Yeah. I'll come back to that in a minute. But the Biden administration comes in and they double and triple and quadruple down on the debt issuance. I mean, I, I mean, we have issued from 2020 to 2023, the deficit is up over $9 trillion. Mm -hmm. Those numbers are so large that, that we can't put our minds around no it. No recovery. And I wish I could remember, it's like a billion dollars is, if you convert it to years, is 3,000 years, a trillion dollars is like, 30,000 years. I may be wrong, but it's ridiculous numbers if you put it into years. And we call these things the Fiscal Responsibility Act, okay? And Americans are just going about their business. Inflation's high. They're trying to make ends meet. They're trying to deal with their family, uh, families, and they're trying to live. But you see suicide rates going up. Mm -hmm. You see desperation. Poverty's going up. Alcoholism has risen. Alcoholism. It's risen to a point that people who weren't drinking are drinking constantly now. They are. I mean, non-drinkers are. are drinking yeah. constantly. But to put this in per perspective, have you ever heard of Argentina? You know, mm -hmm. Argentina was mm -hmm. like a mm -hmm. beacon of the world at oh, one yeah. point. Oh, yeah. Do you know yeah. about the, the hyperinflation and currency mm -hmm. collapse mm -hmm. and everything they mm -hmm. went through? Mm -hmm. So let's put this into perspective, okay? Mm -hmm. We're the global reserve currency right now, for now. I do believe that if I was the rest of the world, I would not continue to, to tolerate this and, and there are certain factors that are taking place. You just don't know if it's going to be 10 years or if it's going to be 5 years or 15 years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, but it'll start changing slowly and then all at once. 
But to put this in perspective, so our deficit went up by $9 trillion from 2020 to 2023. An interesting fact, according to Stanley Druckenmiller at, at a recent conference that he was at, from 20 to 23, uh, well, during that period of time, our Federal Reserve financed 60% of that debt issuance, that deficit. Okay, 60%, $9 trillion. From 20 to 20 to 2023, Argentina's central bank financed 60% of their debt issuance. We're doing the same things that history has taught us. We learn us. from failure. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing. We learn the, from failure. We're doing the exact same things as a government that countries like Argentina destroyed themselves over. Don't even have food on their shelves. The Roman Empire destroyed themselves over by mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. uh, devaluing their currency. Now, I will tell you what's interesting. So, pre-1965 coins. Have you got any pre-1965 coins? A few. I actually have the 50 cent piece that was in my mother's pocket when she came back to Gainesville, Georgia, expecting me in 1951. Okay. So I do have that. All right. So pre-1965 coins, $1,000 face value. So if you've got $1,000 in quarters, you can go to Walmart and you can buy $1,000 worth of goods because it is a currency. Mm -hmm. You can sell those coins on the market for their silver content for somewhere in the neighborhood of nineteen dollars to $20,000. Wow. Okay. Wow. Now, after that period of time, from 65 to 69, I think it is, it was devalued a little bit more. And then there's really no silver content value after 1970 going forward. So mm -hmm. we're starting to reap the fruit of the seeds, the foolish seeds that were, were undertaken, planted back then. But then we've got a government that is so ridiculously foolish, so wanting to be everything to everybody so wanting to keep everybody happy that they're spending us into oblivion. And my concern is, is we've reached the point of no return. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we may not suffer the consequences of this to five to six, five or six years, or maybe we experience it in five or six months, but something has to give. Mm -hmm. and, and the average American just doesn't understand what's going on. Now, they're starting to see this inflation. They're feeling the inflation, inflationary impacts of higher car costs, higher insurance. Mm -hmm higher insurance on homes because there's been asset price inflation there and uh, you know we're, we're in a tough situation mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and just to point out Stanley Druckenmiller pointed out another foolish action of our leaders okay now remember you are electing these people okay you are. Don't blame me for this crap because I didn't vote for it. <laughs> well, here's the thing that I'll say, and I, I disagree. You know, when, when Jordan Peterson made this argument, I kind of disagreed with it to begin with. But he goes back to talk about a biblical study on Sodom and Gomorrah. And, uh, you know, Lot was saying, hey, if I can find anybody that's righteous. And he says there is wisdom in there. If we had, if we had 5,000, 10,000 people in the country who were level-headed, pursued wisdom, Mm -hmm. Okay, not mm -hmm. hate, not mm -hmm. bitterness, not divisiveness. Mm -hmm. And they were constantly in the ears of our elected uh, uh, politicians. And they were constantly going to individuals and saying, look, I know you don't want to leave your business and I know you don't want to get into politics, mm -hmm. but you're the type of person Could that make we a need difference. There. We're yeah. going to surround you and we're going to help you go for this period of time to change the course of this country. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many members of Congress are there? You know, I can't tell you those that data. I've got so many numbers in there. I honestly don't have a clue, but it, it floors me that we can't find details. that number of people with some common sense in America today. That if it's 120, 140, I don't even know how many it is. I don't care how many it is, but it makes me sad that we can't find that number of people with a little bit of common sense. Well, here's the problem. I mean, we're busy with our lives. You've got social media. But we have so allowed uh, individuals to get into government and then go into the private sector. Mm -hmm. Are they? Are they, they get rich. They get rich in government, which is you can you can follow the money. How much oh, do they get paid for Congress? One hundred forty-five thousand a year. One hundred forty-five to two fifty. Yeah, with benefits there. for the rest of their life. But then all of a sudden, you look. They went in there, and I'll give you an example. I'll probably get kicked off of uh, this for doing it, but. But we have one person who went in, and he wasn't worth jack squat. And he came out after being president two terms, if you get my drift. And he was a gazillionaire who now has more million, millions, millions of dollar homes all around the world. And his salary was 165000 a year. Now, how did he do that in eight years? Well, I mean, you do How it. did that happen? So here, here's the problem, right? Like, if you're a corporation, 
of course you're going to go try to bribe your way into business. I mean, it's just human nature, what we're going to do, right? Okay. I guess. So I'm not smart enough to do that. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, think about it. If you could go and you could, you could influence some regulation that says Sherry Martin is the only person in North Georgia that you can buy or sell a house from. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, mm -hmm. because of your understanding of your responsibility and facing Christ and, and not being a socialist, right? I'm not mm -hmm. talking about socialism. Mm -hmm. But you have a responsibility not to be so greedy, okay? Because we have to be generous. The Bible mm -hmm. tells us to tithe, mm -hmm. to give. There's to plenty help for others, all of us. To serve yeah. others. Yeah. You, you want to bring a community up around you. And a real business owner, in real capitalism, I don't know a business owner that builds a business with his employees or her employees that they don't take care of. Mm -hmm. Unless mm -hmm. they're a narcissist mm -hmm. and there are right. those people out there. Yep. But when you're a bean counter in St. Louis, for example, behind the scenes, you're very worried about you know maximizing profitability because you're removed. Mm -hmm. So you've got businesses that go in other countries. There's bribes are common, and in America we may not call it bribes, but they go to politicians and they fund them. They mm -hmm. help their kids out. They help them do this. They promise. Or them they jobs create the a foundation side. in their name where they can make those donations. Right. And and we've seen that in, in politics in America forever, where they create that foundation in their name, and then all of a sudden that foundation is worth four hundred and forty million dollars. That's right. That's yeah. right. So. so they get control of that, the power. So I, 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 it shouldn't happen, but I understand. Every day. I understand Every the temptation day. of business to do that, but the responsibility of a politician is to serve the people. Okay, and that means they say no to the bribes or for they, their salary, or they report Just, the bribes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if that doesn't work, then we need to put checks and balances and influence that. But what what you as the listener out there need to understand, you don't want to do it, but you have to take the time to kindly and wisely reach out to your congressmen, your senators, your local representatives, even locally, and say, we need what's fair for the American people, not for subsets of people, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, even on a local area, mm -hmm. you've got to look at it from the standpoint of, yeah, you might have moved into this area and you love what's taking place here, mm -hmm. okay? And you want to shut the door behind you. Oh, we see it every day. Okay. And we're like, you can't do that. Well, it's selfish. Yeah. It's selfish. It's unrealistic, too. Right? And you can't have a thriving local community with a bunch of selfish individuals mm -hmm. because what they end up doing is, they care more about themselves than they do their communities or their families or anybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. But there are ways that we can work together. Now, at the same time, if you're a local and your vested interest in, in things growing ridiculously fast, right, if, if you don't want to put any restrictions and restraints on there, any wise application of long-term planning, then you're also selfish mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that... that Land growth is good for us. It's good for business, it's good for the economy, but it has to be planned. Absolutely. Yeah. And even our opponents have wisdom in their arguments. So if we work together and we really think and listen to what other people are saying and we apply it and we have community conversations from a long-term standpoint, then we can have a continuance of the greatness that we have here. Mm -hmm. So we don't need central planning. So I, mean, I know this is kind of ideal, but it, it is an ideal that we need to strive for. It's an ideal that you as a listener have a responsibility to speak vocally. You don't call people up and bash them and tell them how stupid they are and blah, 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 and, you know, whatever. That's mm -hmm. divisive. Mm -hmm. But you reach out and you build relationships, and you're constantly in those ears because I'm going to tell you what. There are people that are paid for lobbyists on global agenda by individuals like George Soros and some of these others that don't have your best interests at heart. Right that are paying lots of money for lobbyists to be in the ears of our policymakers. Mm -hmm. So first, we need to be in prayer. If you don't believe in prayer, then then you better hope that there's a lot of people that are out there praying for good and granting you wisdom and seek wisdom and start reaching out because I'm telling you, every contact, and that's one of the things I've been trying to consistently do in the areas that I know in the financial arena. I'm reaching out to Warnock and Ossoff and and, and all of the other individuals mm -hmm. that are out there and saying, look, we got to do something about this. You've mm -hmm. got to make a difference. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to because just because we've come through a period of time where our foolishness, our fiscal irresponsibility has not produced substantially negative fruit in our country right now, we have wartime de deficits, but we've got a situation in the Middle East that could turn into a global war. Mm -hmm. We're still funding the war in Ukraine. You, you know, there's so many global things that are changing. We need to get our house in order at home. Mm -hmm. We need to get our house in order at home. And uh, 
you have a responsibility individually to reach out and kindly and wisely think. If it Write down what you want to say. Write it down and think about it. Read that thing every day for, mm -hmm. for a week mm -hmm. before you reach out. Mm -hmm. Make sure that it's something good. Talk to your friends and your neighbors about it, right? We have this thing where, oh, we don't want to talk politics. You can talk politics and you can talk about the concern because one of the things I've been doing when I'm testing and traveling, I, I ask people that are on the Democratic side, do you trust your politicians? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Mm -hmm. Okay, you lean on on the Republican side. Mm -hmm. Do you trust? I your lean politicians? on the conservative side. Conservative side, which right. I've decided there aren't many as many conservatives. But you know this about me: if John Kennedy were here today, I would vote for John Kennedy. Oh, absolutely. Because John Kennedy was a fantastic Democrat. He was a fantastic person for our country. He loved our country. Absolutely. These nuts in Washington today, four that I can tell you their names, but I'm not going to because I'll get slammed. These four women. The squad have no more business in the United States Congress than the dog that crapped in my yard today does. <laughs> now that's just the truth. And truth will stand when everything else fails. They have no business in American politics. They hate America. They hate our country. And we allowed them to be in Congress with a vote. Right. Sorry. And they may be a the little truth more vocal stand. on that side. And I didn't mean to paint you in a box. I was just saying. <laughs> I wanted to ask you because I was going to catch you off guard. <laughs> Do you trust your do you trust politicians? No, not at all. Okay. No, not so, at all. So, so none of them. None not of just them. some of them. None of them. Now there are trustworthy politicians. I think Johnson. Okay. I do love our new Speaker of the House. I absolutely love him. I would make That's a, a contribution to him. He is Jesus ordained. Jesus had something to do with putting him in there. Jesus saw that squad and Jesus said, we need some help. Right. And Jesus sent, I think Johnson is there because Jesus said to put him there. So to move beyond that, you know, from the standpoint of, let's go back to like our Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen. Now, I don't know if she was hired just because she's a female. I don't know if she's hired just because of an agenda. Of course. But here's the thing I'll tell you. <laughs> Several years back, we had an opportunity. Most all Americans, a lot of people are stuck in houses right now. They don't want to sell because they locked in 30-year rates at mm -hmm. you know three and a half percent or less. Mm -hmm. You've got businesses dealing that with locked, the same thing right now. You've got yeah. businesses that locked in. I actually went out and locked in you know a, a, a little bit of debt that I keep from a business standpoint out as long as I could at the lowest rates that I could. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was just good business. Everybody mm -hmm. that could did. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. our Treasury Secretary was issuing debt. Okay, at two two years at 0.15 percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what Janet Yellen did, and Stanley Druckenmiller was the one that pointed this out. He's got a great uh, video out there if you can find it. You could she could have issued ten years of debt at 0.7 percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, she could have issued thirty years of debt for a period of time at 1.8 percent. Did not take advantage of any of that. So. Mm -hmm. All of that was locked in at two years, so now that inflation is starting to get out of control, mm -hmm. uh, interest rates are going to stay higher for longer, and we're stuck in a situation where if the economy slows down, can the government print money like they did before? They may, because they're fools. Mm -hmm. Foolish. I don't want to get in trouble for saying that. But, no, they're um, fools. They're foolish. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't but care. But we put ourselves in a position to where if they print a lot of money, then asset price inflation is going to continue, which harms the large majority of Americans. Now, I will tell you this. I've spent a lot of time trying to study uh, how to protect against inflation. There's no conservative way to invest to protect yourself against inflation. If you're too conservative, you're going to get wiped out. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous environment. Inflation is an equal opportunity bringer of misery mm -hmm. to all except for the top 5%. Mm -hmm. And the top 5% think they're okay until everything collapses under them and then everybody gets wiped out. Mm -hmm. So the assets don't go. You go back and look at Argentina. Is Argentina, you know, has it been a beacon One of the most beautiful the places in the world. At a time it destroyed. was. Destroyed. 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 The buildings yeah. are still there. Yeah, destroyed. But people couldn't afford to hold on to them because no. of inflation. So, no. so anyway, you know, we're in this period of time where no one wants to make some sacrifices. Mm -hmm. I'm going to encourage you to make a few sacrifices in your time to think about what you need to say, mm -hmm. to say that wisely, and then have loving conversations because I will tell you we're all in this together everybody that lives in this community wants this community to thrive everybody who lives in our country wants this country to thrive and if we don't have the courage and embrace the courage and take the time to speak our mind mm -hmm. our politicians are only going to follow those 
that are talking to him to them and those are corporate special interests that are going to influence them for the benefit of the pockets of the people who love the power that money brings them mm -hmm. at your expense uh, at your expense and it may not be in your lifetime if you're old enough mm -hmm. but i can guarantee you you're leaving a world to your children and your grandchildren that is going to be very very dark mm -hmm. it is if very something dark. is not done now mm -hmm. it is. and there's no way we can get out of this now without major changes in what's taking place in in our country mm -hmm. there's really mm -hmm. no way so i hate to be dark but because the, reality the truth is, will stand <laughs> but the reality is you you know i it may be five years it may be 10 years but it's coming it's mathematically impossible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it may be a little bit longer than that there mm -hmm. are certain forces that can kick that can down the road a little bit longer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i can tell you if we all make a decision now and we all start trying to influence it can be a lot less worse if we make action, if we make that decision now, mm -hmm. we, we've just gotten to the point. You know, you read the Bible front to back. It's like, and I got a friend of mine that I challenged him to do it. He was like, "Man, those Israelites, they're kind of. <laughs> you know, what is wrong with them? God blesses them, and they're doing good, and then they get away from it. They quit following the womb. That is human nature because yeah, it shows yeah. that the Bible shows yeah. us that human nature. Yeah. So we've been through a period of time where our country had strong men and women and made courageous and tough decisions for the benefit of everyone, mm -hmm. okay, protecting freedoms, protecting the ability to defend yourself, protecting, uh, you know, protecting the people from rapacious politicians mm -hmm. and rapacious corporations that led to good times. Those good times, unfortunately, have led to weak men and women. What's that saying you say about weak men and strong men? Strong times, uh, strong men create good times. Mm -hmm. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times, and hard times create good men. Yes. And that's the cycle that you go through. And we are staring at the weakest of all that we've ever had. And the weakest, um, sadly, the weakest has brought destruction to us. Yeah. And um, it, it makes me very, very sad because... Because again, you know, I was raised, my mother was uh, a member of the Republican Party. She was vice president of the Republican Party in Orlando. I mean, we were, I, I grew up in a conservative area. Um, I, a lot of my friends were Jewish and I've had a hard time dealing with what's going on in Israel because I worked for the greatest Jewish law firm in Atlanta. That's where I was groomed as a kid to love people, to love meeting people. I got to meet Maynard Jackson. Did I tell you the story you about me and me his about green that. eyes? He had the most beautiful <laughs> green eyes. And, and just, I, w I was so blessed because I grew up Orlando, Atlanta, Morningside Community, College Park Community, both were in College Park. We had very affluent Cubans who had fled Cuba as doctors and then came there with nothing in a rowboat, but came to America and, and started a new life. So I have been groomed by some of the most amazing people in the world. And, and now to see that we can't even stand together we couldn't do, remember that song, um, We Are the World? We Are the World, yeah. We Are the World. We couldn't even do that song today. No, we couldn't. But let me ask you this question. Do you think they, those individuals were strong because of what they came through? Do you think they sure. were mentally strong? Yes. Did they, did they, they were pursuing something better. Do you right. think they would have had the courage to look at you and say, hey, Sherry, I kind of think you're headed down the wrong road. I love you, but you know, you might not want to go in that direction. Maybe. Or do you think they would have just turned the other way and said, No, Ooh. I think they would have said, yeah, I think they would because have said. Because they cared about making yeah, an impact yeah, yeah. in the world. And, and, and I, I can remember Frank Constangi, Frank Allen Constangi, beautiful, wonderful human being. He died in his 50s. He was a, 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 a wonderful, great guy, and, and he was head of the law firm. And I can remember the time he spent with me, talking to me, advising me. You know, I made $65 a week after taxes, $51.21 a week. But I had to pay rent, buy gas, ride MARTA, and buy clothes to dress to wear, work in the greatest law firm in Atlanta on $51.21 a week. And he taught me, this is, Moon Maid, this is how you do it. You get you another job at night. And that's what I did. You know, it wasn't that I didn't do and I didn't achieve. He said, you may have to work two jobs. And right. I did. Right. You know, I did. Well, and that's a sacrifice that you make. Now, now you know, there, there's a whole line of conversation about that. I mean, in the 50s, you can have one individual working and still live. Sure. Uh, a buggy of groceries was $20. Yeah. Today, a bag of groceries is $60. Right. So, yeah, yeah. So the thing that I would say now is th there's a high probability we've got some volatile times coming at some point in the future. Now, 
the government stimulus kicked the can down the road far further than I could ever imagine, but there was a period of time where, we, where inflation was not a problem. Mm -hmm. But inflation can be a big threat right now, and God forbid we end up in a currency crisis. So, you know, just really think about your situation, really prepare, make sure that you're in a position to survive some turbulent times. Uh, you know, I'm recommending people that if you have the uh, means to set aside a 24 months uh, of your expenses in an emergency fund, if you can, minimum of six months. I will say this, 75% of the population has less than three months of, of something that they could, uh, of money saved, something they could sell, mm -hmm. or family that they can borrow money from mm -hmm. to cover their expenses. So if if we don't get the Goldilocks scenario, if this Bidenomics that, that they keep touting so much is just inflation in a short period covering the, weak, the deterioration that could be taking place under the economy, and if the consumer is tapped out, at what point do you stop borrowing? I mean, credit mm -hmm. card debt's over a trillion dollars for the first time ever when interest mm -hmm. rates are at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. So it's prudent. To, to make sure if you have the opportunity, you've got some investments that are that have got some good profits in them, harvest some of that off the top and put 24 months worth of your expenses aside so that one, you don't, you're not forced to sell anything if the market was to drop dramatically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We run a risk managed portfolio. We're pretty, pretty very cautiously invested right now. I mean, you can get 5% guaranteed in the government money market treasury account. I think it's mm -hmm. 4.99. You know, I just locked in for somebody today, 5.55% six month treasury that's that's due in April, which is technically the safest investment that you can own. Mm -hmm. um, just make sure that you're in a position to be resilient because there's a lot of things spinning. The war in the Middle East could spill over and and it's foolish to think that that's not gonna impact the markets and the economy. Sure. You know, what if oil was to spike to $150, $200 a barrel? Lord have mercy. Right? What if you Lord had to pay $6 again? Yeah. Those are things that can happen, and, and if you stick your head in the sand and you go, oh, I don't want to think about it, then you're going to be steamrolled by it. We mm -hmm. hope that it doesn't happen, but it's better to be prepared mm -hmm. and not have to use your preparation than it is to be unprepared and be steamrolled by this volatility. That's, it's just a part of history, right? It is. And it we is. have a choice, like you were talking about earlier. <coughs> we have a choice to face that resiliency with confidence. For me, it's keeping your eyes on the Lord and saying, okay, Lord, Money, power, looks, all of it goes away, okay? Mm -hmm. What can I do to make a difference and to make this world a little bit better for my children, my loved ones, and the community to keep this, this you know, uh, what we have inherited as our country and pass that down in better shape to the next generation? Yeah. I want my kids to be, in a, be stronger, better, and more successful than me. Well, we've got 30 seconds. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> we've got 30 Sorry seconds. About that. It, no, I love it. I love it. I didn't mean lecture. I, I love it. I love it. I hope that you listen to every single word. Don't forget, hit subscribe on YouTube. This will go on YouTube as soon as we get off the air. They will do a little doctrine and send it to YouTube. Sherry Martin, Sherry Martin 2009, the older program, Sherry Martin Heart of the Home, the shorts that have Xana and animals and cooking and lots of fun. Subscribe to YouTube, doesn't cost a dime. You hit subscribe and you get here and see all the things that we talk about every single day here. And um, thank you, every single one of you, but please continue to pray for, for the DeFore family and, and yes. pray that they get through this crisis with their loved one at home now from the hospital, but they are having a tough, tough time taking care of him. So, so say a prayer. I will see you again soon, only on ETC in the mornings and then YouTube from now until eternity, y'all. Here we go. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay.